All right, so we're learning about periodic table trends today. You will need to know how to find different elements on the periodic table and tell me if they're bigger in size, if they have a higher electronegativity, things like that. We're going to learn what all those words mean today and how to do that. Make sure you are following along and drawing the arrows correctly for each thing that we do. First one we're going to do is atomic radius. Um, you should know the word radius from math class at some point. Um, we know that that has to do with size. I want you writing out that it specifically is the size of an atom from the nucleus to the valence energy level. We learned about valence energy levels on Monday. Who can tell me what a valence energy level is? Gabby? Is it the outermost um, electron? Outermost energy level in a nucleus, yeah. like, or in the atomic structure, yeah, with the valence electrons on it. Perfect. You do need to remember that valence has to do with bonding. Okay, we use the valence electrons for bonding purposes. What I would have you do is know that as we go towards the bottom left, the atomic radius is getting larger. So if I'm going from top to bottom, it is getting larger. At the very top, they are considered smaller. If I'm going from right to left, it is smaller to larger. So smaller atomic radius over here, larger over here, okay? With the arrows going down and to the left, that is the same thing as if I wrote an arrow like this. Okay, so these arrows are the trends. I'm going to be using those interchangeably. I'll say arrows or trends. I expect you to know what I'm talking about. <coughs> so we're going to pick a couple of different elements to use as our examples. I want you to put an A over SC and a B over LA. If I gave you those two elements, or if I gave you a blank periodic table with just an A and a B on there, okay, you should be able to tell me which one has a bigger atomic radius based on these trends or the arrows. So if I'm looking at just A and B, and I'm also looking at these arrows, which one is bigger? B. Okay, so make sure you write down B is bigger than A. And let's do an example where we're going from left to right. I want you to put an X over cadmium and a Y over tin, which is SN. So X over CD, Y over SN. Looking at those two, which one is bigger? X. Okay? So you would write X is bigger than Y. I feel like atomic radius is pretty straightforward. Okay? Any questions at all? Yes. We're good? Okay. We're going to go to the next one, electronegativity. <clears throat> so electronegativity is not a word that we use or have heard before, probably. So I do need you making sure you write the definition for this. I want you to write that electronegativity is an atom's affinity. Underline that word. It's an atom's affinity for electrons. <clears throat> Basically what affinity means is that the atom wants to keep its electrons and gain more. So the word that typically comes to mind when I think of electronegativity is that these atoms are greedy. So the higher electronegativity they have, the greedier they are. They really want to keep their electrons and get more. The, not, the lower electronegativity um, elements are kind of just like whatever, not greedy, okay? The trend for this, so the arrows is going to be going up like this. You're actually going to stop at F, fluorine. 
I want you to make note that the noble gases are not applicable here, okay? Make sure you write that noble gases have zero electronegativity. To explain why on that, okay? And when we labeled our periodic table with the number of valence electrons that things each have, remember, we did one, two, we skipped the transition metals or D block, right? And here they had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? There's a maximum of eight valence electrons. Our noble gases are the ones with eight valence electrons. We are going to learn about the octet rule and oxidation numbers next unit. But you basically need to know that the whole goal is to get eight valence electrons. You want a full valence shell because that's when you're more stable. So fluorine is in group what? How many valence electrons does fluorine have? Seven. Seven. Okay. It only needs one more to fulfill that octet rule, to have eight and to be stable. So it is really greedy. It wants to keep all seven of those and it really wants that last one. So it is very, very, very electronegative. Does that make sense? Down here, francium has one valence electron. Okay. It would be easier for francium to lose that last electron and that last orbital to go completely away, to go back down to the fuller one underneath it. Does that make sense? That's the thought process. So if my arrow is going up like this, it's the same thing as drawing arrows like this. It's opposite of the atomic radius, what we just did. So way down here is the lowest electronegativity. Over here is high. I would make note that how do I want to word this? Any element that is closest to fluorine is the highest one. So the examples that we're going to use for this one, I'm going to put an A over germanium, which is GE. I'm going to put a B over selenium, which is SE. And I'll put a C over PO. So you should have three examples up here. So if I told you to find all three of those elements, or if I gave you a blank periodic table with just the A, B, and C, which one has the highest electronegativity? B. That's exactly how you need to read it. Are there any questions on this at all? Okay, go ahead and write that B is higher than A and C, both of them. Good? All right, flip to the back. This is our last one. Ionization energy. <clears throat> so ionization energy is the energy that is required to remove. Make sure you know that this is to remove an electron from an atom. question all right the trend for ionization energy is very similar to the trend for electronegativity we are still going up except now we are going all the way to helium the noble gases are a thing for ionization energy <coughs> same thing low is this bottom left corner with francium and as we go up it gets higher So just like fluorine was our highest electronegative thing, I want you to write that the closest an element is to helium is the highest in electro or in ionization energy. Sorry. <clears throat> noble gases, so this group right here, we know our noble gases. All noble gases have the highest ionization energy. So 
So if you were given three different elements and you're told to compare in terms of ionization energy and one of them is a noble gas, that noble gas will take the cake every single time. Okay? If you had more than one noble gas, you could put an A over argon and a B over krypton. You would just tell me that A is bigger or higher than B. Does that make sense? You would follow the arrows at that point. How this relates to electronegativity. This is super important. This is kind of how it comes full circle. So we talked about electronegativity being the greediness of the atom and how fluorine is the greediest of them all because it's super, super close to fulfilling that octet rule, the eight, right? Well, if our noble gases have the eight, they would then have the highest ionization energy. It would take so much energy for them to remove or lose one of those valence electrons, right? Because they are already at eight. Whereas if I go back to francium, it has one valence electron. It would not require much energy to take that valence electron away, right? It wants to lose them. Just like in our notes when we went around the room, metals lose electrons. They'll give them away, right? Whereas the closer we get to eight, that switches. Does that make sense? And it would take a lot more energy to remove those electrons since they're close to eight. Make sense? That's how I want y'all thinking. Any questions at all? We're good?